Yesterday on his program, Ben Shapiro said just about the most dishonest thing I've literally ever heard in politics. It was an insult to literally everyone who was watching his program and it had to do with the approach of the Republican Party to Barack Obama back during his presidency. Take a look. Republicans impeached, impeached Bill Clinton in the 1990s. They never made a move to impeach Barack Obama, despite the myriad scandals that cropped up during his administration. I'm not aware of a single major Republican figure who said that Barack Obama was not the legitimate president of the United States, despite the fact that Democrats have claimed that George W. Bush was illegitimate. They've claimed that Donald Trump is illegitimate. So this is just not true. And doubts about Barack Obama's belief system came from Barack Obama being an extraordinarily radical figure. Barack Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform the nature of the country. That's a pretty radical statement. Okay, that was a pretty radical statement. He did say at one point, and this is just not true. I hope he was referring to what he was literally saying at that moment because nothing he said there is true or even I don't, I don't know how you could say something as stupid as that and get paid to talk about politics. I mean, I actually do, he gets paid by billionaires to advance their economic interests. That's literally the only reason he exists as a human being or let alone a media figure. But the idea that nobody questioned the legitimacy of Barack Obama, that was literally the only thing 40% of the country did for an eight year span, including by the way, Ben Shapiro, which we're going to return to. Now, did any prominent Republicans question the legitimacy of Barack Obama's presidency? Let's start with one that you might have heard of, Donald Trump, a guy whose political career literally is only about birtherism. That is how he got to be a big name in Republican circles leading up to his run for the presidency, was pushing year after year after year the racist birther conspiracy theory that asserted that because Barack Obama wasn't born in the US, he literally cannot be president. That's what they said year after year and he spent every minute he could going on every show that would accept him to do that. Now, that was such an obvious counter to Ben Shapiro's willful lies during that segment that he of course had to shift the goalposts. And he did that very quickly tweeting, Trump was a fringe character for nearly the entirety of the Obama presidency. He wasn't a Republican figure until he ran. You can't name a single major elected Republican official during Obama's presidency who challenged the legitimacy of his presidency. So all that is, is shifting the goalposts. Now, it's ridiculous to say that he wasn't prominent at that time. And we're gonna return at the very end, how prominent was he? Not in general, but specifically to Ben Shapiro. That's gonna be a fun little end cap on this story, but that's simply moving the goalposts. He is the president now, that's how he got conservatives to support him, including Ben Shapiro, by the way. So the idea that he was just a fringe character is literally insane. And the issue is that the context he's trying to put on this is the exact opposite one. The issue isn't just that prominent elected Republicans did question legitimacy, and we're gonna list any number of them in just a minute. It's that literally every aspect of the Republican Party of conservative thought during the Barack Obama presidency was founded in birtherism. It infested their elected officials, their candidates, their media, and their voters, and we're gonna be going through all of them in this segment. So, okay, if if Donald Trump doesn't count, then let's move on to a few prominent Republicans, including Sarah Palin, who said in response to a question by radio host on whether she would make Obama's birth certificate a campaign issue in 2012. She said, I think the public rightfully is still making an issue. I don't have a problem with that. I don't know if I would have to bother to make it an issue because I think that members of the electorate still want answers. So she had just got done being their vice presidential candidate a month and a half earlier. I would say fairly prominent. Now she didn't get elected, thank God, but she was pretty prominent at the time. Okay, maybe she doesn't count though because she wasn't elected. What about the Speaker of the House, one of the most powerful Republicans over the past couple of decades, Newt Gingrich, who said, I know that there is a desperate need to attach racism to everything, but in fact, I think that Donald Trump said what he said because it's the right thing for him to say, talking about Donald Trump's birth or comments. So Newt Gingrich, who's supposed to be like the wonk, the serious, the intellectual Republican. He was their strong leader in the 90s. He was apologizing for Donald Trump's birtherism back in 2012, back in May then. Pretty prominent Republican, I would say. But okay, he wasn't elected at that particular moment. Let's turn now to some elected Republicans, including Senator David Vitter, who responded to a question about Barack Obama's birth certificate saying, quote, I personally don't have standing to bring litigation in court, but I support conservative legal organizations and others who would bring that to court. I think that is the valid and most possibly effective grounds to do it. So a sitting senator said that not only should we be questioning it in our rhetoric, but we should be bringing it to court. 
pretty prominent, pretty important. Uh, let's turn now to the House. We have uh, Mark Meadows, who said uh, 2012 is the time we are going to send Mr. Obama home to Kenya or wherever it is. That's an elected representative saying that Barack Obama should go back to where he comes from, years ahead of uh, Donald Trump there, and it's Kenya or whatever. He doesn't even know what conspiracy theory he actually supports. Uh, he's not the only one in the House who said that. You remember Michelle Bachman? She was not only a representative, she was also, she did fairly well as a Republican presidential candidate for quite some time. On Good Morning America, which invited her on, she said, uh, well, it isn't for me to state about his origins, that's for the president to state. Because it's on him, she doesn't know who's to say whether he was born in America or in some other country, that's for him to deal with. So there's a representative and a candidate, you have another presidential candidate and a former governor for the Republican Party, Mike Huckabee. He was talking with Steve Malzberg on WOR in New York and he said he would love to know more about the circumstances of Obama's birth, adding quote, what I know is troubling enough. That was another presidential candidate. At one point, many people thought he could be the next nominee for the Republican Party, openly questioning it. And so you have tons of former candidates, vice presidential candidates, senators, representatives, but you also have it infesting right wing media for almost a decade, including Sean Hannity, who said in 2011, if you ask the question, all right, well, why not just show us the certificate? Ah, oh, you're a birther, you're a birther, that's what you are. It's not been my number one issue, but I've been following it and I've been saying, why are all these people that just asked to see it, why are they crucified and beaten up and smeared and besmirched the way they are? So Sean Hannity, I mean, it's not his number one issue, don't get me wrong, if it turns out to be absolute BS, don't tar me with that. But I'm just asking questions, I just wanna know why is it so bad to want the first black president to give his birth certificate? Don't we ask everybody to give a birth certificate? He literally said that later, everybody, every candidate gives their birth certificate. It's not true, it's not remotely true. And so look, we had Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson has talked about it, Laura Ingram of course pushed it for literally years. You had Eric Bowling who said, we haven't touched it, but there's a legitimate question as to whether or not the President of the United States is allowed to be President of the United States. So no big deal, but all of our candidates, people running for President and our media, we all think that either he definitely wasn't born here, or it's a legitimate question to ask, why are you getting so mad at us? Huh? We're just saying maybe he's not actually eligible to be president, maybe we're just questioning his presidency. And that effect from candidate down to media was so strong over such a long period of time that even years and years after this stopped being a topic of conversation, it was still the default position for Republican voters. In a, in a Newsweek study, this is a, published in Newsweek, in December of 2017, we're talking just a couple of years ago, 57% of Republicans said it was definitely true or probably true that Barack Obama was born in Kenya. 57%, that's higher than the percentage who believe that climate change is happening. I mean, give any fact, they're more likely to believe that Barack Obama was born abroad than almost anything else. That's how strong it was. But nobody questioned his legitimacy, right? Why are they doing it to Donald Trump? Why are they being so mean? We were perfectly fine to Barack Obama. And that's where we return to Ben Shapiro, who not only is giving the middle finger to his audience with these blatant lies. Forget all that stuff about him being a intellectual gladiator, the cool kids philosopher. He's just a pundit, a lying pundit who lies to his own audience. I mean, honestly, like the idea is that he's, I guess, disrespecting me or other libs, but we don't watch his show. The people who watch his show are hardcore right wingers and he's lying to them. Does anyone disrespect, does anyone hate their audience as much as someone who would lie this blatantly to them? And not just about these facts that we've showed you. It's not just that he either doesn't know or pretends he doesn't know that so many candidates and so many media figures said these sorts of things. It's that he knows what he said at the time. And that's the most insidious part of these lies. And so we turn to Ben Shapiro. Now, Ben Shapiro was savvy enough at the time to pretend that he wasn't really sure. He was savvy enough to never come right out and say that Barack Obama definitely wasn't born in the United States. But it turns out he was a little bit savvier than that because he was savvy enough to know at that time that that's what the audience wanted to hear. And so he spent years playing both sides and trying to have his cake and eat it too. Pretending oh, it's not the big issue to me. And yet it did inform his politics in some interesting ways. And so let's turn to that. He said back in April 2011, the birther story has always been a non-issue to me, but I actually find Obama's untimely release more disquieting than the hubbub. 
So that's very similar to Tucker Carlson's position on this. It's the racist attacks against the first black president, that's not the problem. It's the way Barack Obama handled them, that's the problem. But the thing is, his interest in this and his writing about it goes much further. He said back in April of 2011 on Front Page Magazine, the media has shown its usual incredulity at the indisputable stupidity of the American people. How could so many people question President Obama's birthplace? How could they wonder about his origins? Are they all simply racist? The answer, of course, is that Americans are desperately seeking an answer to a simple question. Why does President Obama appear to be so un-American? So it's not his issue, but he certainly understands where they're coming from. And he says this, and look at the strain weaving throughout the paragraph I'm gonna read you of wanting to have it both ways on this. Ironically enough, the biggest, the biggest problem for America arises if President Obama was born here. Because if he was, the problem of un-Americanism is now internal rather than external. Perhaps that is why so many Americans wonder about the birth certificate. They hope against hope that President Obama is a symptom of a foreign ill rather than a domestic one. No matter whether Jer Jerome Corsi comes up with evidence of Obama's foreign birth, however, it is clear that the problem of Obama-esque un-Americanism is now endemic to American culture herself. We have an ideological problem in our midst, and no amount of digging in Kenya and Indonesia is going to solve a problem that now starts right here. So there he's saying Jerome Corsi, who wrote a book about this by the way, he might turn up something. Does that sound like a person who doesn't believe these conspiracy theories? He is absolutely desperate to have it both ways. But the thing is, in the end, he had it both ways on the issue, but not on the political aspect of that issue. And that's where we turn back to Donald Trump. Because Ben Shapiro would love to have you believe that he's the reasonable Republican and he doesn't buy into all this conspiracy theorizing, which is odd. Because did you know that back during that period, he actually supported a candidate as the next potential nominee? Do you know who that was? It was Donald Trump. Back in April of 2011, he tweeted, why I back Donald Trump on the Ben Shapiro show at big810am.com. Now, I have not been able to actually find that show, but I did find his writing and it got into why he supported Donald Trump of all people. Back in 2011, he said this, in reality, the birth certificate issue is specifically geared towards certain political ends for Trump. First, it is obviously calculated to attract the most anti-Obama segment of the conservative base. And remember, it just attracted him. Is Donald Trump the best Republican candidate for president out there? It would be tough to argue otherwise. He's got all the makings of a breakout star. He's got bravado and the cash to back it up. If he really runs, he won't have any trouble finding supporters. Looks like he already has one. And as he puts it, he is the Obama administration's worst nightmare. So far, who can argue with him? So remember, he just got done yesterday saying, we never questioned his legitimacy. We never attacked him the way that they're attacking Donald Trump. And there he is lauding Donald Trump specifically because he's the worst nightmare of the president. How much more disingenuous could you possibly get? But here's the thing that I want you to bear in mind. There he talks about his money, his bravado. But I want you to ask yourself, why did he support Donald Trump in April of 2011? Why then did he do a podcast about it? Why did he write an article about it? Do you know what Donald Trump was doing for the three weeks leading up to that post by Ben Shapiro? He had actually been on a bit of a media blitz. He was on uh, The View, Fox News, Laura Ingram's show, which wasn't on Fox News at that time, The Today Show and Morning Joe. And on all of those programs, the only message he spread was the birther conspiracy theory. He spent three weeks doing that, and then all of a sudden, Ben Shapiro's a big fan. All of a sudden, Ben Shapiro literally wants him to be the Republican nominee. Weird how that works out from a guy who doesn't take, he doesn't take in for any of this conspiracy theory stuff. That's who Ben Shapiro is, okay? We gotta pierce the bubble. This guy hates his audience, he hates logic, he hates facts. His feelings might be hurt by that, I apologize. Guy hates being quoted, but that's who he is. That's all the evidence. I mean, there's way more candidates we could talk about, but I think that's enough to make the point. Here on The Damage Report, we talk a lot about the big banks and their ways of getting rich off the poor. They saturate the market, but there are other options. And I've got info on a socially and environmentally responsible financial institution that has no ATM fees, gives you cash back on every purchase. They even commit 10% of their earnings to charity. It's called Aspiration, and if you go to aspiration.com slash TYT to sign up, you'll get these perks and that's more money to spend or save or to spend, just treat yourself.